Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a closer look at the ideal gas equation, also known as the equation of state of an ideal gas. So it's typically written as PV equals nRT, or we can write it as PV equals RT when we assume that n equals 1 mole. Some textbooks do that sometimes. You don't always read the small print or the text and you don't realize and go, well, what happened to the n? It simply means n equals 1, we'll ignore it for now, PV equals RT, or sometimes it's written like this with a small v because they let small v equals the volume divided by the number of moles to make it mole independent. When a gas changes from one state to another, either one, two, or all three of the state variables will change. Now there's different situations where one of them will remain constant. Either the pressure remains constant, the volume remains constant, or the temperature remains constant. In each case, it makes it a little bit easier to deal with the ideal gas equation. If the pressure remains constant, then we can write PV equals nRT by moving all the constant terms to the right, all the terms that change to the left, we end up with V divided by T, because those are the two then that change, and set it equal to nRP, assuming the number of moles remain constant, obviously R remains constant, and we said pressure remains constant, so if V divided by T is equal to a constant, we can then say that the volume and the temperature of state 1 must equal to the ratio of the volume and the temperature of state 2. That is known as Charles Law. If the volume remains constant, instead of putting the P down there, we're now going to put the V down there. So P divided by T is equal to NR over V, which is also a constant in this case. And so therefore, when there's a change of state, the ratio of the pressure to the temperature of state 1 must equal the ratio of the pressure to the temperature of state 2. That is known as Gay-Lussac's law. And finally, if the temperature remains constant, then we can say that PV equals nRT, since n, r, and t now all are three constant, P times V is a constant, and we can write that the product of the pressure and the volume in state 1 is equal to the product of the pressure with the volume of state 2, and that is known as Boyle's law. But finally, what if none of the three are constant? Then we can write that PV divided by T is equal to NR, and of course N times R assumed to make constant, and then we can say that P times V times T of the first state must equal P times V divided by T of the second state. Now, if you don't know, per se, which of the three situations you have, either if even if you have any one of the three, you can still use this format of the equation to solve for any change of state, to look for the pressure, the volume, or the temperature of state 2 when the pressure, volume, and temperature of state 1 are known, and two of the three of state 2 are known. So this is what we're going to use to try and determine the pressure, the volume, or the temperature of a second state known the initial conditions and the changes of two of the three of the second state. So that's a little closer look at the equation of state.